Hi everyone and welcome to my guide for the support Demon Hunter. So this might surprise you a little bit. Support Demon Hunter has not really been a thing for a while and uh, even when it was kind of usable it was not really that great. I've played it a few times in the past but it was never really the meta. But now we have a big Odyssey's end buff with 150% additive damage and this is new in Season 21 and this puts Demon Hunter back on the menu. So we don't know exactly if it's going to be the meta but uh, there is actually some options to include a Demon Hunter now and uh, we'll see exactly you know, how we optimize the setups and um, what we can replace. Most likely we're going to replace the Monk in most cases and uh, we'll see if that actually holds up for a high-end pushing as well. But especially for speedruns, Demon Hunter is a pretty good choice now. This Odyssey's end buff gives um, in typical performance scenarios something like a plus 80 to 100% boost to your DPS and uh, it's uh, very very strong to uh, include this plus all the other stuff that Demon Hunter brings which is actually uh, quite significant. So we'll see how well it will fit into the meta. You still have to see that the monk can bring shields and a lot more toughness so it really depends on you know how the setup is for the trash clear which is most likely going to be the witch doctor and witch doctor is relatively tanky so you could think about replacing the monk at least in high tiers and uh, for speedruns yeah, I think it's actually going to be better than a monk. So with that out of the way, let's go over the setup here. And uh, this is still with the old defeat banner, it's not updated yet, but um, I'll definitely do this once uh, we have the, the stuff from Season 21. So imagine this is the Gaul TH, this is just a placeholder right now. And um, also on these setups here, I have uh, put the Shadows set and so on, this is all Gaul Demon Hunter. The reason to run the Gaul Demon Hunter is because of the 4-piece bonus that allows you to shoot your generators while strafing and this way you can apply intending shot very easily which is the trigger to uh, get the Odyssey's end buff. So you want to uh, shoot intending shot and then strafe around and this is going to be your most important activity, your most important buff because it's by far the strongest one. But it's not all. We have the Wolf Companion, 15% multiple damage, pretty good and no other class has uh, any buffs like this almost and uh, a very very strong choice here. We have Multishot giving you 8% crit chance this is another really good buff and uh, crit chance is also kind of like a multiplier so it's like something like 10% DPS again and otherwise we have, have a few defensive buffs and a few other additive damage buffs. The main defensive buff here is numbing traps. You can apply this by slowing enemies or by hitting them with certain skills and conveniently we have intending shot and intending shot slows everything so you'll apply numbing traps very easily with this. Other than that we have uh, strong embracers, those stack and uh, you can also apply them as a demon hunter. So uh, every support should always run those generally. And the way to do this on demon hunter, there are uh, two things you can do. First of all you can use Bola with Lilan Bow. This has a 100% chance to pull in on explosion now in season 21. So this also got buffed a bit. And uh, when you pull enemies with the Bola then you will apply the strong arms. The other way of doing it is with Vault Rattling Roll. So you can just vault through the enemies once and knock them up like this and then you apply the strong arm boss as well for another 30% additive damage boost. So it comes a bit down to which setup you're running exactly. We have a few different variations here but more about this in a second. The rest of the general setup is also typical support stuff like Oculus Ring that you always want to have. You have uh, the Ice Bling for example and Toxin. One thing you need to know about Ice Bling is only one can be applied but Toxin can stack from uh, supports so every support needs to run this one and Ice Bling only one has to bring it. So you have to coordinate a bit with your um, party members. Generally Demon Hunter is a very good choice for this because of the multi-shot. You just do one multi-shot every three seconds, you apply this crit buff, you apply the Ice Bling for a total of 18% crit chance. It's really nice. And the third gem is kind of up to you. I have the Gogok here. So this gives you a bit of extra attack speed, dodge, cooldown, so it's overall a nice choice. You can also go with Esoteric if you feel extra squishy, but generally Support Demon Hunter is extremely tanky, you have lots of tough toughness buffs and you should not really struggle very much. The reason to include the Hellfire Minute here is uh, quite simple and that is speed patterns are really bad, so you don't want to go with a flavor of time in most cases unless you're doing really high tiers. On high tiers generally you don't even click speed patterns and you want a really big convert so obviously a one minute convert there is pretty good but for any kind of speed runs um, it kind of messes up more than helps and the convert doesn't really do much because you're usually one shotting stuff anyway and uh, then the convert does nothing. So here we can just get another passive but it doesn't really matter which amulet you're running. 
One thing to note here is that if you run bolas, you want to run MMI's duffel, and that's actually one of the harder supports that has to play, like one of the hardest in the game actually, I'd say. So especially for fast pace, let's say tier 110s, 120s, uh, with this setup you will be replacing the monk, um, if you or, or the Zenek, and uh, you have to do the polling with this. So you have to be really fast, you have to be ahead of the party, you have to get out the entangling shots really fast with your strafe, and then you have to swap the bowler, sh uh, pull everything together and swap back to entangling shot and keep strafing. And all the while you have to weave in your multi shots. So it's a lot of stuff to do, and in some cases you even have the nemesis braces, so you have to click the partners quick quickly as well. You have to take the decisions of where to go. So um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to manage. And there's even more when you have the Marauders 2-piece. So this is another choice that you can make, and I should also talk about this here. Uh, the reason to run Marauders 2-piece is uh, not for your own toughness with Soy Secret, but for the Boar Companion. Boar Companion gives a marginal amount of life regeneration to your party, but it also gives 20% all res. And in speedruns, it's definitely fine to use it, because the stuff dies really fast and you don't really rely on making very precise pulls, you just want to kind of cluster stuff you know, group it up a bit, so this is fine. But the thing is, whenever you press Wolf Companion, you will also activate Boar Companion, and the Boar will taunt everything around and apply a lot of crowd control reduction. So for high tiers, and uh, also in some other setups where someone else is doing the pulls, this is generally a bad choice, and it's not really worth this little bit of all rest to, you know, mess up your pulls. Because um, you need to make, you know, the, the right pixel stacking, especially for Barb in, uh, in like, you know, T150, and you don't want the boy, you know, to uh, to mess with that. Other than that, we have Lower's Crown here. I chose to go with a Ruby. It gives you a little bit of extra XP, but it's very, very little because it's only effective at 10% uh, uh, rate. So it's 4.1% experience, and that is divided by the panel of party members. So it's like 1%-ish, and uh, it's not nothing really crazy. So if you're struggling in any way, you just replace this with a diamond, and you're fine. So uh, just keep this in mind, this can squeeze out a little bit more once everything is fine, but uh, especially when you give up um, too much wolf up time, then just go with a diamond and it's gonna be better. Here's a setup without pulling, so you can replace the lean line bow and the bolas, and for example you can go with mark for death, which is another 50% um, additive damage buff. Uh, there's a choice to be made between contagion and uh, value of death. Typically I prefer contagion, you just snipe like a really weak enemy and it will like spread through the entire rift. And otherwise, especially for high tiers, you could go with um, the Valley of Death and you just put it on the ground. For example, when you're pushing with Witch Doctor, this could be quite nice, because um, there's nothing really dying, and uh, then this will help you out a bit. There's also a super chill version of this setup, which is here. So again, we have the God DH, and we have Captain Crimson's, and Leonine's Boy Curve, you can go in Geome even, which is not really necessary, but it just helps you out a bit to just relax those uh, cooldown requirements. And uh, otherwise, there's even like lots of clarity. So no strong arms here, which is a big change. Um, applying strong arms with vault is also a little bit tricky. So generally, a strong arms is really good in this bowler setup, and kind of hard to use in this um, uh, no pulling setup because you have to vault through enemies. And typically, you want to do this after the pull is made. So you have to kind of get the right timing. But uh, here, you can also just skip it because you're already doing so much additive damage that. The strong arms, even you know, it's not even going to be up very consistently in most cases, or at least not on all targets. So um, yeah, it also can mess up things a bit. So you can go with something like this, and just go super tanky, and it's going to be fine. So overall, there's uh, like a lot of stuff you can change around. Just make sure you have the Odyssey's end and the shot and so on. Wolf companion definitely, multi shot definitely, and the numbing traps, and the rest. You know, it really comes down to kind of like what setup you're running, what tier you're running and uh, also like your own preference. For the passives, I suggest something like uh, Tactical Advantage, pretty much always, Numbing Traps obviously. Uh, for speedruns specifically, you can go with something like Blood Vengeance to give you the, the extra resource, because there's going to be lots of health gloves anyway. Hot Pursuit is always nice, and uh, Awareness is pretty good, maybe Perfectionist, and so on. So there's a few choices here, definitely. And then again, Nemesis Braces can be included easily on a Demon Hunter, but again, you have to coordinate with your other support and maybe you don't even need to run this. In a high tier pushing scenario, I would suggest this setup. And this is a little bit more tanky and we don't have to strafe actually. But instead we have the sentry, giving you another 25% damage reduction. So in total you bring around 46% to your party. And uh, this is uh, very nice to have. So you typically don't want to waste one skill slot on the strafe, so you go to sentry instead. And uh, you can buff the party a little bit more. 
So the typical setup for intending shot is heavy burden, which increases the duration of the slow to 4 seconds. And uh, now we have chain gang with uh, 4 enemies in 2 seconds only, because here you're going to be attacking a lot. So um, it also comes down to a little bit of your preference, but this will make it the uh, application process a little bit faster, but you have a smaller time window to drop the buff. So you have to kind of like stay around the pool all the time, you have to keep shooting, then apply your motor shot and the other stuff and keep shooting again to refresh it. The way that entangle shot works is that you slowly entangle up everything in the pool. So you can hit the same target over and over, it will be fine and uh, it will kind of like spread on its own. But uh, as, as soon as you don't attack for two seconds or four seconds of heavy burden, the buff will drop from everything at once. So you have to re-entangle everything one by one. So this is to be uh, something to be careful about. And since this is like your, your biggest damage buff and pretty much doubling the damage of your DPS players, then you have to be, make sure that this is up at all times. So we have Hunter's Wrath for this purpose to increase your attack speed a bit. But again, it's not really required. So you can also go Nemesis Braces, for example, if you need to. And otherwise, you know, for example, Captain Crimson plus Yang's combo gives you lots of toughness. Uh, overall, as I said, it's quite tanky anyway. And there's Elusive Ring here. You can also go with Obsidian Ring and just drop Elusive if you like. And uh, you won't not really notice it even. And uh, obviously Bombardier's Rucksack is pretty nice because two additional sentries. Also has an additional primary stat, giving you, uh, you know, a little bit more um, juice. And uh, here we have the flavor in the high tiers because of the conduits. So this is about it for the basic setup. And uh, as I said in the beginning, we have to wait and see exactly you know, how well it fits in, how people can use it. We don't know the exact form and matter yet. We don't know, you know what people will experiment with. And uh, this will kind of like be shown over time. But there's definitely a point to be made for the Demon Hunter, especially in fast-paced runs, speed runs like 110s, 120s. And uh, even for pushing scenarios, I could imagine that if you get the Witch Doctor tanky enough, um, it might be worth dropping the squirts on a Witch Doctor and just include Demon Hunter instead, because the damage buster is just so good. So we'll see about that. And uh, I'm already quite excited to play it myself and try it out and you know see how well it fits. Traditionally, Demon Hunter has always been just slightly worse than the rest. And uh, I guess this Odyssey's end buff was kind of what, what it took to, uh, you know, bring it um, back into relevance. So we'll see. I'm excited and I hope this guide helps you a bit to make your own support to Hunter. And I'll see you guys next time.